Hey there, Mr. Reddit here. Welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled People Stories. Our first story we'll be reading today. My Karen sister-in-law thinks she can kick me out of my own beach house. After that, am I the jerk for refusing to speak to my sister because she wouldn't let my daughter be a flower girl at her wedding? And after that, there's a dog show in town and one of the guests has been lying and complaining all day. Now for every thumbs up this video gets, one Karen does not get to take anyone's beach house. What about the lake house? Is that off limits too? So please smash that like button and subscribe and turn on notifications for new stories from Reddit every single day. My Karen sister-in-law thinks she can kick me out of my own beach house. 12 years ago, our grandparents passed, leaving their beach house to me, 37 female, and my brother, 35 male. The place is within drivable distance of my town. My work is such that I can do it remotely a lot of the time. I now have two small kids. Because of these factors, through the years, I've been in the beach house much more, basically summering it in, while my brother, who lives much more distant, only crashes occasionally or requests it for a couple of weeks while I often used it through the winter. My brother is now married to my sister-in-law, 25 female. My sister-in-law has very specific ideas of what their new married life will be like. Pinterest board, custom hashtag for social media, affirmations posted around the house. The beach house features prominently in it. Despite their having to drive four hours to get to it, she insists we should divide time equally and leave it free if they want it, and that she may well redecorate to make it more hers. I have redecorated that house to suit me. I asked my brother for no money except for structural issues. There are three bedrooms, so there are no reasons we couldn't be there together. My brother literally told me he wasn't there enough to care about swapping use of the main bedroom, which is the only seafront one, and in which my husband has built our bed. She wants that particularly, claiming it would be their perfect love nest. I think it's my bedroom, and while she's welcome to my brother's, she can't have mine as well. We had established how to work it. I've built my patterns around it, and I don't want to change it now. She says she can't be there while we're there because it would ruin the feeling of retreat. My brother is happy with whatever she's happy with, but I know very well determined opposition on my part will make him back down. The last discussion we had about it, when I pointedly asked, would she like to live, laugh, love on the kitchen table? He winced and left the room. So if I want to hold on to the house on my terms, I can. But does it make me the jerk? To be clear, I don't object to their being here more. I don't object to their having more alone time. I don't object to their redecorating their room or bathroom, however. I don't object to their bringing some things in. But I object to having to swap my room after 12 years, having her overhaul spaces I redecorated and spent money on, and agreeing to a rigid 50-50 schedule when I already know my brother's CBA with regular long drives. ETA. You guys, I'm totally fine with being called the jerk. But I find it hilarious that people here think my brother is an unfortunate and bullied soul. He left our hometown to strike out on his chosen career. He did wonderfully. He bought a house before me and my husband did. He adores traveling abroad, and until he met sister-in-law, he wasn't keen on romantic commitment. I'd spent weekends pottering about the house, and he'd fly back to Bangkok to hike. And that was wonderful for both of us. The issue here is that he is conflict avoidant and unwilling to discuss this with me and my sister-in-law. I certainly flipped out and I'm happy admitting it and bringing discussion back, but believe you me, he wasn't in the beach house because he was having the time of his life elsewhere. ETA 2. Right people, I think I heard enough. I've spoken to a mortgage advisor as to how much I should offer and will discuss it with my husband reusing our savings as deposit. I will then offer to my brother when we meet up to discuss details being firmed up. If I manage, I'll update. One thing I want to say is, it's pretty laughable to me that people so quickly assume I don't know my brother or am strong arming him or bullying him or whatever else. I got use of the house and he got someone else to maintain his private in suite for the one to two weeks a year he wanted it. Sea view room might be best for lots, but he rather wanted to annex a bathroom and that's what he did. They also aren't airbnb this as some of you suggested. This isn't a random vacation share, 
it's a well-loved family home that, with my brother's full knowledge, consent, and enjoyment of the fact that everything was clean and lovely and updated every time he came here, which was rarely, I used more and more over the years. I trust my brother to acknowledge that. As for people change when they get married, if this was my brother asking me these things, it would be different. What I got was my sister-in-law swanning in with demands and him murmuring non-committally in the background. You are all very right. I should have brought it to him first though, and that's on me. But I hardly denied his wishes, because truth is, his wishes haven't changed. They've been together two years, and his pattern of using the house hasn't changed. She just thinks it will, because now she has redone their main home, she wants another project slash Instagram backdrop. Anyway, thanks to those of you who engaged in good faith, very much indulging all the you're the jerks who managed to speak to my relationship with the house without implying I was cheating my brother out of it. ETA 3, I thought this was clear. We both have to declare our ownership in our tax return, so this isn't a split tax, it's a separate tax each of us owes under our country's laws. My brother paid for the redoing of the bedroom he chose as his own. About eight and four years ago, we split the cost for structural repairs to part out the roof and the pipes. Absolutely everything else, the wooden porch outside, the garden, the fixtures, the kitchen, the paint job, that was me. Mortgage advisor confirmed under our country's laws, those would count towards a sizable increase in value of the property and they would come out of his share if they were sold. Yes, I did them, but he was informed and didn't object and at the point of sale, he would benefit. My husband agrees to using savings for deposit to buy out. Have an appointment firmed up with my brother. We'll update after. Reddit, am I the jerk? Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or sister-in-law? Please let us know. This is why you never marry a Karen. Just ask Reddit boy over here. Am I the jerk for refusing to speak to my sister because she wouldn't let my daughter be a flower girl at her wedding? So I, 28 female, have a sister who's 26 who got married last month. I'm gonna be blunt. My sister has always been one of those people that has to have everything perfect to, to the point Sometimes it was hard to be around her, but she was my little sister and I've no other siblings, so I always made excuses when she'd hurt me when I was doing things right in her eyes. I was kind of nervous when she asked me and my daughter, who's four, to be bridesmaids in February because I knew she was going to be a massive bridezilla. Over the last few months, we've had to practice multiple dances, pay for very expensive dresses, and put up with her tantrums. I told her from the start, if she was anyway nasty to my kid, I wouldn't stand for it. She assured me she'd never be nasty towards her favorite person in the whole world. Well, her now husband's little cousin, who's eight, started coming to dance practice with her mom, and my sister decided to ask her to do little things, like show my daughter how to throw the petals. I honestly thought she'd make them both flower girls for a while, but when she started to make my daughter sit out and have the other girl do her poem, I knew what was going to happen, but prayed I was wrong. I invited her out to coffee a few weeks before the wedding and asked her what was going on. She told me she was glad I brought it up because she was looking for the right time. Apparently, my four-year-old wasn't doing everything right and she was afraid she was going to mess up her version by saying the wrong thing or not doing the dance right on the day. I told her she's doing a pretty good job and everyone was always praising her. Sister giggled and said, it's not their day now, is it? So it's not up to us to figure out what's good enough for her wedding. I asked her straight up, did she think her niece wasn't good enough to be in her wedding? She replied with, not to something as big as a flower girl, but she can attend. I asked her, how was I going to break it to my daughter, who's excited about being in the wedding? She told me to figure it out. I told her I'd give her a day to rethink her decision. If not, we wouldn't be attending nor speaking to her ever again, then left. Well, two days went by, so I couldn't put it off any longer. I broke the news to my kid. Even though I tried my hardest and sugarcoated it as much as possible, the news still broke her heart. She cried herself to sleep, so did I and my husband. Well, after a week, when I was a no-show for anything, my sister started to panic and started to take every chance to talk to me and even drop off gifts for my daughter. Then I told them why a good number of our family, including bridesmaids, dropped out. We ended up going for a few weeks away with no phones. When we came back, my sister had sent me multiple letters and emails apologizing. Her in-laws and husband have called me a jerk for doing what I did. Edit. 
My brother-in-law saw this post and told my sister, who cried reading all your comments. How do I know? Because they showed up at my job knowing I wouldn't want to cause a scene. They begged me to delete the post before people they know see it and kept apologizing. Finally, my sister said she might be pregnant. I told her, even if she is, pregnancy doesn't wash away all the crappy things she's done, and I hope her husband's siblings never treat her kid the way she treated mine because I don't plan to be a part of her life. She burst into tears, saying she was sorry and she loves my daughter. I told her to leave before I call security, and her husband tried to talk to me alone because I was making her so upset, and everyone was cold towards them because of me. I told them everyone was cold because Cinderella and Prince Charming forgot that after treating everyone like crap that no one wanted to be in there happily ever after. They didn't like my mocking tone and raised their voice at me. My boss told them to leave, who knows the situation and has a five-year-old herself, so she's on my side. My sister's mother-in-law reached out to my parents, asking for everyone to meet up on neutral terms so we can all work out our differences. I'm going to go to this dinner party because I want to hear their story and officially tell them leave me alone. I will update you guys. Important edit. My sister's photographer saw this post and reached out to me on here. She knew my full name and she gave me her Instagram to confirm. This goes deeper than my daughter not dancing right. Apparently, she overheard my sister's mother-in-law and aunt-in-law talking in the bathroom. They used mean names against my daughter and husband. They called me names. The photographer said they were both drunk, but brother-in-law also made jokes around my sister earlier in the day, which she smiled at. She also thinks my family members heard it, and it's the reason they dropped out. So yeah, my daughter wasn't flower girl, because unlike me, her aunt or the other flower girl, she doesn't have blue eyes and blonde hair. If you're reading this, Sarah and Frank, forget you guys and your family. My kid is too good to be around jerks like you, so stay away from us. And if anyone in my family knew the real story and didn't tell me, forget you too. Edit 4. Thanks everyone for the love and support, but especially thank you to the photographer who came forward. Thank you so much for bringing this to my attention before I let them back into our lives. You're the real one. Edit 5. So I thought I'd answer a lot of questions that keep getting asked because I'm tired and will be going to bed soon. My parents are fully on my side. So are multiple other family members. The ones that aren't have been cut off. My daughter doesn't know the full story, but as a treat for all of us, we plan to take her to Disneyland for Christmas and my parents have said they will join us. As for my sister, some people have mentioned she might be in a dangerous relationship. Well, her husband is from old money and his family is very well connected in England, which is something she always wanted, so I don't know. But if she is in a bad relationship and afraid, it's up to my husband to forgive her, not me. I found out three family members knew, including a bridesmaid that dropped out knew. I've seen a lot of people making fun of the fact me and my husband cried ourselves to sleep the night my daughter found out. We didn't cry about her not being a flower girl, nor did we cry while she was awake. We cried because our child was extremely hurt, and there's no worse feeling than your kid thinking they're not good enough for someone they love. For the commenter who was extremely nasty about my husband crying, a father's love is equal to a mother's. Men do and are allowed to have emotions. Do better. There's a dog show in town and one of the guests has been lying and complaining all day. We didn't have the dog show last year and I didn't know it was happening this year, so it was quite a surprise to get to work and see our entire hotel is booked. In fact, we were overbooked for single king rooms with fridge and microwave. We don't have much to begin with because lockdown smashed our planned renovations, so that is going to be a problem. A shift blocked a number of standard two beds, no fridge or microwave, to move people to, etc. In addition to our dog show guests, we have around a dozen regular people in-house who also have dogs since our brand Motel Sucks is pet friendly as we don't charge a deposit. Throughout the day, it's been like a dog war in our large grassy courtyard with dogs barking at each other and whatnot. My manager's apartment is in that area and she was calling me throughout the day because some of these dog owners weren't cleaning up after their dogs despite signing our pet policy. So around 5 p.m. or so, Dog Crab Show checks in and has attitude from the beginning. While not a proper Karen, she still was a headache to deal with. She is a horrible guest. Karen I have a smoking room reservation under my name. Me. I apologize, but we do not have smoking rooms. Our entire hotel is non-smoking. Karen. Oh, really? 
Then why was I promised a smoking room by the lady I spoke with? Me. I see you booked through a third party, and unfortunately, it seems they weren't aware of our hotel smoking policy. Something about her attitude made me think she knew full well that more than likely we don't have smoking rooms. I don't know any hotel in town that does, actually, and I think that's the case in the majority of hotels. Okay? Well, that's fine, I guess. I'm also an AARP member. What discount do I get for that? Me. This is an OTA third-party prepaid virtual card reservation, and I cannot alter their rates at all. I apologize. Well, I was told you could apply the discount in person when I check in, and you're telling me you can't? Me. These types of reservations are prepaid, and I cannot alter that in any way. So again, I'm sorry, but the person you spoke to may not be aware of that. Karen. Okay, fine. I'll speak to someone else in the morning who knows what they're doing. What else do you need? Me. I need a photo ID, credit card, or cash, please. Okay. Here you go. And I hope you have something on the ground level. And of course, I do not, so I prepare to get more attitude. Me. I'm sorry, ma'am. For that room type, two-bed deluxe room with fridge and microwave, we are completely sold out, and the last room I have is upstairs. I assume you have elevators here? We do not, ma'am. Wow, I was told your website says you have elevators. It doesn't. How am I supposed to carry my ice chest up the stairs? There were no requests of any kind on her reservation at all, and we don't have a smoking option. Me. I can help you with that, ma'am. Never mind. If that's all you have, that's all you have. So I guess we have no choice. We'll just make do. Me. Okay. I see you have pets with you. How many? Five. Oh boy, this is more trouble. But thankfully, she said they stay in their van and don't go into the room, so dodge that bullet. I finally get her checked in, and off they go to unload their giant van, which takes them about two hours. The dogs are there in kennels and look like expensive breeds. After they finish unloading and tucking in the dogs, she walks back in. There's something wrong with our TV. The channels are going in and out. Can we get a different room? Something on the ground level? By that time, we had nothing left except our blocked rooms. Me. Unfortunately, I do not have anything left on the ground level. But I do have a standard two-bedroom near yours that I can move you to. What do you mean by standard? That means it does not have a fridge and microwave. So, it's a downgrade. I assume that means cheaper, right? Me. Yes, there is a slight price difference. Well... That goes back on my card? No, it will not. As I explained, your rate is prepaid, and while I can move you to a standard room, what you paid will remain the same. Okay, whatever. So I move her, and apparently maintenance was working on that room, and no one told the desk. So that was on us, and she rightly complained about that, and I ended up moving her again. Since she had a legitimate complaint, she played that hand for as long as she could, Recounting the utter horror of entering a room that wasn't ready to be rented out, etc. I move her, and throughout the night, I got more bogus complaints from her. She called and said there were kids running around outside her room, screaming, etc. And she was worried that might upset her dogs. By chance, I was watching the cameras for a different reason, and there were no kids running around. To be sure, I rewinded the tape, and again, nobody was by her room at all. She called several times about a loud neighbor next to her, and there was no one next to her on the other side. One room was down, and the other room was one I moved her from and had to put down for the night. There was someone below her, but she was insistent it was from the people next to her. I knew she was BSing, but I listened and followed routine. In the meantime, other guests are arriving, including one of the overbooked rooms with fridge and microwave. I explained to her what happened, and she was very nice about it, but said she would need one tomorrow. I remembered I moved Karen out of a room with fridge and microwave and told the guests that I would be able to move her into her room soon. She was extremely thankful and gave me a tip then and there, even before I brought the fridge and microwave over. So I bring it over and as I'm setting it up for her, some random dog, not a dog show dog, ran into the rooms and bit my ankle. I reminded the guest of our pet policy. All dogs need to be on a leash if they're out of the room. He was sort of upset about it, so I told him, since the dog bit me, if the dog doesn't have a leash, we will need the guest to leave the property. Soon after, 
Karen called me again with the brilliant idea of moving the fridge and microwave from her old room to her new one. I lied and told her we cannot move fridges and microwaves from room to room, which is technically true, but something I do on occasion, as in for the nice lady from earlier in the day. Unlike Karen, her reservation did have actual requests, and I thought, what the heck, she's super nice, so I'll go ahead and do that for her. Karen didn't say anything for a few moments, then said, Okay, you'll be hearing from me soon, and hung up. A few minutes later, Expedia called me and asked me to issue her a refund for the entire stay, and I refused. He then read me a list of her complaints, including that I stole her fridge and microwave and was making up policy to rob her out of what she was promised. I quickly explained the issue and said I could refund her unused nights, but she would have to pay for tonight as she used the room and will spend the night there. He tried to get me to give her a 50% discount for the night because she could settle for that. I again refused and he put me on hold for about 15 minutes as I guess Karen tried spinning more lies. He asked one more time and I said I can't do that and she agreed to move to a different room and that was all explained to her at the time and she knew what to expect. I wrote up a lengthy report for a shift then clocked out exhausted. Am I the jerk for telling my wife she embarrassed me by bringing a meal to my work? I, 33 male, recently got hired at a large company in the south where me and my wife moved months ago. My wife was excited for my new job and talked about preparing a surprise for me, which got me excited, but I didn't know what it was until she showed up at my workplace two days ago with a meal she said she prepared specifically for me since it's my favorite. Apparently, this was her surprise. I was a little upset she brought it to my workplace. My coworkers, who are vicious and brutally honest and sarcastic, got involved and kept teasing me about the meal. One of them, Austin, joked about how mommy is so supportive by bringing food to my workplace. I felt like crap as he and other coworkers kept laughing at me. I went to work the next day and Austin kept making jokes about me saying things like, is mommy going to bring lunch today as well? And when is mommy coming to change your diaper? and stuff like that. One of them, who's someone I don't know that well, said, Oh, you guys, I can still smell the meal OP's mom brought yesterday. She's such a great cook. Bless her heart. And the giggles kept on. I felt so awful, I went home and just blew up, telling her that she flat out embarrassed me and just torpedoed any prestige and respect I had among my coworkers. I told her what Austin and the others have been doing and asked if she was happy for giving him ammo to come at me like that. She argued that she was just trying to do something nice for me and didn't care about what people might say, but I was a selfish jerk who only cares about what others think rather than how she felt by my constant berating over a meal she put effort, money, and time into to make and bring to me. The argument escalated after I suggested that she could have waited until I got home to surprise me with the meal instead of showing up while I was working, which made me seem unprofessional. She said she came during lunch break, but I was still working during lunch break. She said at this point, I clearly find it easier to blame her than to stand up for myself against those childish bullies. I said I didn't appreciate what she said, but she replied that I should be grateful she cared enough to bring me a home-cooked meal, then thanked me for showing her it's not worth wasting any more of her time cooking for me after this. I told her to stop blaming me for something she caused and asked her to admit that maybe she should have consulted me before bringing the meal over so I could avoid being the butt of every joke my coworkers told. I don't even know how long this is going to last. She told me to man up and either report them or quit then. I was floored by what she said. I had to walk out because I couldn't take any more of this and felt like she wasn't listening to how her behavior caused me an issue at work. Edit to say that I in no way don't appreciate my wife's effort, but the only problem I have is that she didn't tell me beforehand about whether it was okay to bring the meal over to my workplace. I really preferred that she waited until I got home or we could have gone out later to eat. I agree that the main problem I have is my coworkers, but I lashed out because I felt overwhelmed with their hurtful remarks that offended my wife as well. Am I the jerk for not inviting my friends for an annual New Year's trip because they didn't invite me last year? So my friends and I have been traveling for every New Year since we were 16. We are in our early 20s now. It's a friend group of six people, three girls, three guys, and naturally, we all dated someone from the group at some point in high school. The guy I used to date and me broke up in 2020 but stayed friends. He found a new girlfriend a few months after that. Let's call her Amy. 
but I was okay with it and we all continued to hang out. Now New Year 2021 is coming up and we start to plan our trip. We were supposed to go to Greece. Usually, I'm the one talking to the agencies and trying to save us as much money as we can. Everything is fine and going well until about a month before the trip. My ex, best friend, comes over and tells me that Amy is uncomfortable with me going on a trip because everyone is coupled up and I was single and given my history with her boyfriend, she felt awkward. I felt sorry because I never got the feeling that she didn't like me or anything. So I asked if that means that she's not coming or what. Turns out that she still wanted to come, just didn't want me there. I was kind of hurt by this, but even more when the rest of my friends agreed that maybe it would be better if I didn't come, so there would be no drama on the trip. Anyways, I didn't go. Kind of stayed away from Amy and my ex since then and stopped hanging out as much with all of them. Not long ago, Amy and ex broke up. I don't know why. And now this year's trip is coming up. I already have plans with my roommate and we're going to Amsterdam. When my friends learned about this, they just assumed they are coming with us as well. I told them that roommate and I are going alone, and if they want to go, they can plan it for themselves, but that this is not a group trip. It's petty, I know, but feels right to do to them since what they did to me. Anyways, they called me some names and we had a fight, and I'm starting to wonder if maybe I am in the wrong. I mean, I'm ending years-long friendships over some stupid trip, so am I the jerk? Edit. Wow, guys, this really blew up and is a bit overwhelming having thousands of people giving you advice. Thank you for your rewards. It's very kind, but as far as I know, they do cost money, so please don't waste it on me. Anyway, it's 1.45 a.m. and I need to sleep on all of this. I'm grabbing coffee with some of my friends tomorrow before classes, so I'll let you know how it goes. Entitled Mom thinks if my garage door is open, she and her bratty son can search for it and take what they want. I've been lurking here and have been afraid to post because I'm awkward and don't know if my stories will be as well liked as everyone else's. So here goes. I am posting from my phone so it might be some mistakes. The stars. We've got myself from about 16 years ago. I'm 28 so I was 14 at the time. We've got entitled mom. My neighbor from across the street, a self-entitled mother. We've got B5K, her 5 year old kid who's obsessed with other people's stuff. The scene my garage. During the summer between 7th and 8th grade, my parents would go to work and leave me with a giant list of chores so overwhelming I wouldn't even try. Also, I live in Texas, so it would sometimes be too hot to try. One day, to avoid being crapped on, I decided I would attempt to do the chore, clean out the garage. My parents hoard crap, and they get upset when they can't find what they want. And my stepfather just buys crap and doesn't even try to put it somewhere. So it's my job to organize the garage so that my mom can actually park her car. I'm moving stuff around for a few hours and I'm sweaty and hot and all it looked like I was really doing anyway was just removing the mess. I came across my tricycle from when I was younger. I put it outside on the driveway so I can try to find a place for it later. I decide to take a break and go inside, fix some lunch. A couple minutes later, I hear rummaging in the garage and something break. I thought it was my cat. I look, it was B5K, sounds like a Star Wars droid name, searching through the place, looking around like he just found good treasure. Me, hey B5K, where's your brother? He's grounded till Monday. Me, well, you should go home and play with him. What did you break? Kid looks like he's gonna cry. Me, listen, I don't play unless your brother is there too. Please go home. So I close the door. I thought that was the end of it. I go back to my food and VH1 music videos. When I'm done, I go back outside and I notice something is missing. The tricycle is gone. I knew who took it, B5K, so I get on my bike and ride it around the block. I catch up to B5K in almost no time at all. He tried to start pedaling faster, but it's a tricycle, so it's not like you can do that. I want everyone to know this. This was no plastic thing that leans back. This was made out of metal and looked almost like a very small bike. So anyway, I yell at the kid to stop. He starts crying and ignores me. I pedal up to him and get in front of him. He rides into my bike and falls. I don't help him up, but I take my trike back. I put it inside the house and then go back outside to finish up in my garage. Now from across the street to the left, I hear B5K yelling to someone. I assumed it was his older sister. 
She was a year behind me and didn't usually care about the stuff he complained about. So I expected her to come over here and just give me a little crap playfully and then go home. I go back to my chore and then I feel someone prod me between my shoulder blades. I assume this to be his sister, so I turn around, ready for a pretty smile and a sarcastic chewing out. I was ill prepared for this because it was Entitled Mom in all her rage. Entitled Mom, what did you steal from my son? Me, nothing. My son says you took something from him while he was playing. Where is it? Me, I didn't give him a thing. He tried to steal my tricycle. Where is it? Not telling you. You could have heard him. Me, I look at her very confused. He was only playing. Give him his tricycle back. His tricycle? He got it from my garage. Well, you're too old for it. Me, look lady, I'm just trying to finish a job so that I don't have to worry about it. Please walk away. I pulled my flip phone out of my pocket and called my mom. Entitled mom promised to have my trike back when my mother came home and picked up her little thief and left. Support the channel by joining as a member today and we'll give you a shout out in our next video. Or come watch this video next. You won't believe what Karen does in this one.